Up next, we have the honor of hearing a deeply personal narrative by Atreus Good. Since entering college at UNC in 2003, Atreus has faced his fair share of ups and downs, including losing multiple jobs, facing arrest on an assault charge, and eventually forming a mentoring organization, Movement of Youth. At the present, Movement of Youth includes college mentors, mentors from UNC, Duke, and NCCU, with over 200 students across eight counties in the triangle, representing 28 at middle and high schools. Please welcome Atreus. In 1990, my mom began using crack cocaine. I was five. Crack kidnapped her identity and held her hostage to a debilitating, despicable disease. I mostly grew up with my dad, and as a single parent, he was one person doing the job of two. When my mom was around, Sometimes she would take me out with her as she was getting her drugs. And I saw a number of things that would make even the strongest stomach sour. And I'll spare you the details. Her drug abuse got worse year after year. It got to the point where I would have a visceral response when I saw the police because she had been locked up, sent to prison, sent to rehab, so on and so forth. Her addiction continued to spiral out of control until one day in 1998, she made the decision to break free from drug addiction because she realized that crack was stopping her from enjoying what she valued most, family. I faced a number of challenges growing up, to say the least. Although my mom was able to transition from being addicted to crack, which is miraculous in and of itself. Although my father was able to stand strong in the midst of the turbulence, I had a lot of psychological garbage because of my upbringing. And I struggled to get my mind off the past. In middle school, a teacher of mine, Miss Reed, suggested I participate in a mentoring program sponsored by the Greater Charlotte Chapter of the 100 Black Men of America. The 100's motto is, what they see is what they'll be. By participating in their programming, by getting exposed to a number of opportunities, I began to let go of the past, and I began to see a future filled with promise and potential. When I graduated from high school, the 100 gave me a scholarship to attend college. Once I got on campus, I had an overwhelming urge to give back. I recognized I wasn't in college because I was so great on my own. My parents struggled through my mom's addiction until they were able to provide for me. Members of the 100, in particular my mentor, Wilbert Harper, willingly gave me love, support, and hope. The least I could do was give back. But at the time, I didn't know how I would give back. I remember a poster on the Media Center wall in Cochran Middle School. It had an image of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. It had a quote under it. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. That quote resonated with me. I looked it up when I was in college. It continued. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. All you need is a heart filled with grace 
and a soul generated by love. That was my commitment, service. During my junior year, I began research, and I started a mentoring organization, and I named it Movement of Youth. Movement of Youth helps young people transform their futures through targeted programming and mentoring. We started out with 11 students. This year, we're serving about 200 students. And all of the students that have, that have completed the program have graduated from high school. Now that you have some context about me, let's dive into this conversation about challenges, because we all face challenges. I don't know where you're going in life. I don't know what your dreams are. I don't know what obstacles you might face along the way. All I'm asking is for you to allow the words I'm about to share with you to sink down deep into your spirit. We sometimes tend to blame everybody and everyone for the challenges we face. But the truth is, we are profoundly impacted by the words we say about ourselves. Have you ever talked yourself out of something? Think about your self-talk. What were you saying to yourself? I can't do it. I don't have what it takes. This is too difficult. Research shows that the majority of our self-talk is negative. What I'm challenging you to do today is to think about this principle called linguistic relativity, which means language constructs reality. The words that come out of our mouths impact our thoughts, which give birth to our actions. I want you to consider eliminating three dirty words from your vocabulary. The words we say when we are in the midst of challenges will impact how long we stay in those challenging situations. The first word is but. But it can't be done. But that's not my job. But we don't have the budget. But what if it doesn't work? When we say the word but, we're laying obstacles in our path. When we say the word but, we're calling up mediocrity and defeat. That doesn't mean we won't have days where we feel down and discouraged. That doesn't mean we won't have days where we feel overwhelmed by our problems. Yet, if we want to move forward in life, we have to get off of our butts. <laughs> Speak words of favor into your life. We were all created for magnificent things. The first step to addressing the unexpected and handling challenges in your life is by getting your butt out of the way. Second dirty word is try. Now, I see some furrowed brows wondering, why can't I just try? This is better than not doing anything at all, right? Think about the last time you said you would try to do something. I don't even have to go any further. <laughs> Speech is over. See you later. <laughs> Perhaps you said you would try to call your friend to go to that event that you really didn't want to go to in the first place. Perhaps you would try to clean your room or your garage or something you were trying to clean. You, you forgot about it. And we have a number of students in the room. I know this isn't the case. Perhaps you said you would try to do some homework. <laughs> Guess what? Probably didn't happen. Why? 
instead of focusing on the task at hand, you were only concerned with trying, with putting forth any sort of effort, no matter how small. And when you failed, you could absolve yourself from any responsibility or any guilt because all you have to do is say, well, I tried. Try is defeatist language. Let's start speaking victorious language. Like Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. Let's handle the dirtiest word of them all, if. If only I had more money. If only my childhood had been better. If only I made better decisions along the way, I would be further on in life. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not promised. Focus on today. You can't do anything about the past, but you can do something about the future. I'm 28, and since I graduated from college in 2007, I've had three full-time jobs, two of which I was terminated from. The first time I lost a job, it was due to a minor policy violation. I didn't see it as a big deal. I thought I made the right choice in the situation. I was single, didn't have any major financial obligations. I was able to recover relatively quickly. I found a new job in less than a month that provided me with tremendous opportunity personally and professionally. In January, of 2013, I experienced termination for the second time. But this case was much more drastic. I was let go due to some very serious allegations that were brought against me. Due to the nature of how my termination was handled, there were a number of people external to the organization that not only knew I'd been fired, but what I was fired for. I experienced tremendous embarrassment and shame. I had people close to me tell me I was finished. This time, I had a family. I had mounting financial obligations. And what's worse, the organization I built, Movement of Youth, was moving away. Disappointments almost always accompany setbacks. But I'm still standing. And I have a testimony to share. And it's not because I was impervious to pain. It's not because I was able to shake off the disappointment. There were thoughts swirling around my head, if only I'd done this or if only I'd done that. But I'm a firm believer that long before we were born, each and every one of us were blessed with gifts, talents, assets that were given to us by a higher power. And those gifts cannot be taken by people. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what types of mistakes you've made. If you persevere through challenges, if you wake up every single day and walk in your purpose, your gifts will continue to grow. And the fertilizer are the words you speak. I challenge you to meditate on this idea of linguistic relativity. I encourage you to eliminate the words but, try, and if. 
and replace those words with victorious language. Because language constructs reality. And I'll leave you with this. It's a word I read a long time ago. Your tongue has the power of life and death. My sincere hope is that you accept my challenge and you speak life. God bless you.